This is the story of how I ponged. I did. As a kid, I ponged. Hey, it was the 70s. We didn't have all over body sprays in them days. Anyway, that had nothing whatsoever to do with how I ponged. Might help if I explain that part of my dad's job was to service slot machines. You know, jukeboxes, pool tables, that sort of thing. And every now and again he'd take me with him. And I'd sit at pub tables and I'd count out the ten piece from the machines for him. So it was no surprise that one wet winter morning I heard him shouting for me from downstairs. Hey! Are you going to come down here or what? We're going to be late. Come on. Where are we going, Dad? I asked when we got into the car. But he wouldn't tell me. He just smiled. Two hours later, I was going up the wall. I was just about to shout, Are we nearly there yet? When he beat me to it. Not long now, he said. And pretty soon I figured out exactly where we were going. Blackpool! In the middle of winter, when everything was shut. Well, we drove down to the front, went past the Golden Mile, and then turned into the car park of what appeared to be an enormous castle. Above the door of the castle hung a banner which read, The Norbrek welcomes the 1973 Northern Amusement Machine Exhibition. We went in. A row of pin tables on one side, and on the other, a row of one armed bandits with their brass Indian chief heads, forming an honour guard into the exhibition centre, which had been transformed into what can only have been the world's largest amusement arcade. And everything was free. Every kind of kiddie game, every kind of ride, Authentic looking rifles on stands shot at imitation tin cans. Penny falls, tuppenny pushes. Giant scale electrics under domed glass covers. The Grand National, run by metal horses. Guess who won? Giant dice hung from the ceiling and spun. We moved away around the show and as we got to near the end I noticed a stand that had been left unattended. On it, a cabinet. Nothing special. No flashing lights, no bells or whistles. In it was a small black and white TV screen. And projected on it was a single dotted white line down the middle. With two small bars at either side which went up and down. Controlled by heavy metal dials. A press of the free play button brought forth a white dot which moved across the screen and then disappeared. Another press and another white dot that I tried to stop by twisting the dial. Missed. And then again. Missed again. Ah, this game stinks, I thought. Which well matched the legend printed in black above the screen. P-O-N-G. Pong. Now, obviously, I wasn't the first in the world, but I might have been the first in the UK, maybe. In, or, or in the north of England, at least, to have played on a video game. The age of the mechanical had come to an end. Replaced by the electronic, the monitor, the motherboard and the microchip. A revolution that changed the world, it changed mine. In a few short years I'd be sat at those pub tables counting out 10 peas from Space Invaders, Defender, Missile Command, Donkey Kong, Pac-Man and many more. Business boomed. We moved house, I moved to school. To one with encouraging teachers who sparked a love and appreciation for art, literature, film and theatre. Which led me here, now, to tell you how, as a kid, I ponged. What do you mean I still do? Cheek. <laughs>